Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Uh, for this third video in the Revit series, what we're going to take a look at is uh, drawing walls. And we're going to use the DWG that we placed in our elevation in the last video uh, to create the wall outlines that we already have. So I'm going to show you a couple of fundamentals for just drawing walls and then we're going to get into defining these wall types as well. Uh, so one of the things that I find is very important to understand right off the bat is location lines. So if I come up to the architecture tab here and I click on wall, I'm just going to choose uh, the basic generic 8 inch wall type that they have here. And you'll notice once I get into the wall tool that the draw tools come up towards the end of the ribbon. And the first one, as always, by default, is the line. So what I'm going to do is just draw this wall along the back, uh, along the top here of the drawing. But um, I just want to bring your attention to this ribbon right here underneath. This is giving us some options to change. And since I'm in the main floor right now, what I'm going to want to do is... Um, make these modifications for my constraints. This plan that I'm looking at is actually the basement so the base constraint that I want to create is going to be the top of the basement floor. Um, the base offset I want that to be zero and then the top constraint I want to be the main floor. So basically this is going to be the foundation wall that I'm, I'm drawing in here. Now you'll notice that when I made those changes I get this eight foot eight and a half as my new height. Now the location line is essentially the line that I draw, where in the wall assembly is that going to be? So as you can see here with my grid, I have the grid lined up to the inside face. So I'm going to change my location line to the finished face interior. So now when I draw my line, it's going to draw the wall with that in mind. Now I'm getting that error message again saying that nothing is visible and that's because my main floor is up above my wall. Sorry, let's just take a quick look at this. Okay, right. Now that's good. That's a, a happy accident. So by looking at my DWG in 3D uh, as I always do if I get that warning it's saying it's not visible. Why is it not visible? Well, that's because I'm drawing underneath this. So let's go back to that main floor plan that I was looking at. And in a way, I'm creating geometry underneath the main floor level. So no, I can't see it. But in this view, with nothing selected, if I like, I can scroll down and come to underlay. And in underlay, what I'll do is I'll choose top of basement. And now I can actually see uh, a faint outline of this wall. Okay, so there's some other ways of creating wall types. And to get into that, let's just go back to wall and we'll make these visible in this floor. So I'm going to change the top constraint here from um, yes to second. And the base is going to be main. Okay, so that's perfect. It's, it's reset that. Um, so I'm just going to start drawing here. So notice if I start here with the same settings as I had before, you can see that my location line is where these two dots are. So if I select the wall and come back to my properties and change that location line to say the core center line, now the two dots are in the center of this wall. Okay, so you have a core center line and a wall center line. The core essentially is describing the structure. So that might be the way that you want to go if you're doing a commercial with steel frame. But really, it's up to the circumstance, I guess, in your, uh, your discretion at the end of the day. Now, when I look at this right now, I've got nice thin lines for my CAD drawing, but these are thick. There's a tool up here at the top that you can click on to toggle thin lines. And now I'm seeing uh, what I would see in AutoCAD if I was to bring this over. Now another thing is that this wall is just generic, so there's no assembly information. If I change this wall type by selecting the wall and up here in the instance selector, I can change that over to brick and CMU on metal stud. And I know I'm, I'm going to have a wall similar to that, so I'm just going to make that change quickly. 
and now you can see the information here I've got some veneer but there's still not a whole lot so if I come down to the bottom here in these view control settings here I've got a detail level that I can modify and if I want to see all the information for this wall assembly I'll click on find and now you can see the the various aspects of the wall assembly if you want even more information you can come over here to shaded and it'll actually give you a little bit more information here so you can see the difference between the, the sheathing, your stud layer, the brick veneer, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, that's one way of placing walls. You can come back here to uh, the wall tool and you can do the same thing with, say, a rectangle. If I want, I can just draw a rectangle out like that. Um, coming back to this drawing here, we could do the same sort of thing uh, just by clicking this corner and back to that corner. Now I'm gonna have a whole box here now if I go back to the 3D view. Okay, so now we're seeing in 3D what we just drew, these walls here. We can take a look at those shaded as well. So the same thing applies uh, in any of these draw tools. So it's basically you're using AutoCAD techniques for drafting only you're getting a whole lot more out of it if you want to create a wall like a polygon or what have you you can uh, use these other tools arc tools but just in drawing uh, specifically just drawing walls you can start your walls and then type in dimensions so right now it's showing seven feet if I want it to be nine I'll simply type a nine into the keyboard and hit enter and now I can move my mouse in the next direction that I need to go. Maybe I need to go over 15 feet. And I just type in that into the dynamic input. Um, so I'm just going to put another wall in here and move it over. And you'll notice that when I move that over, it changes, it fillets it the way I want it to. So notice I'm just holding down my left mouse button and dragging these walls and it modifies and updates really nice. Um, now if I was to put another wall in here in between, right, this wall now is, is independent but it's giving me dimensions here. So if I need to make this as a closet, say I can actually type in another dimension here that will give me... Um, a 20 inch clearance okay so this this wall here obviously it's not going to be 8 inches I could come down to my instance selector and maybe put in uh, just a small inside partition wall okay so these are some uh, just fundamental ways to draw walls and I don't want to take too much more time on, on this topic because it's really quite simple um, but there's a lot of ways of editing you have your um, what you're called witness lines so maybe you don't want that to be four foot five from the inside you want it to be four foot five to the in uh, to the inside face sorry not the core so you simply select that just click on that dot and it'll move that so you'll see now it's, it's not four foot five which you want it to be it's modified it for the thickness of the wall so now you can come back here and type in four foot five hit enter and it's exact. Okay, so the BIM modeling practice is very precise and there's many ways to skin a cat as they say and um, really it just takes a little bit of time uh, playing with some of these tools and you'll see the power of BIM. So again, any comments or questions, please uh, leave those below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.